there has been a philosophical root to control others since man could first convey a language or put it in writing. As soon as people had power and one slime ball that came out of the ocean developed into a stronger man than his neighbor, somebody had the inclination to control someone else. You can see a mirror image of society really watching little children even at a preschool. And you can see factions already starting at four years old. Who's gonna be the strongest, who's the fastest, who can outwit the other guy, and who can bargain off the most Barbies and G.I. Joes to somebody else. George Bush Sr. just didn't stand up and say there's a thousand points of light in a new world order. It didn't just start in 91. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. You can sell anything, if you think about it. Uh, look at the circus. Uh, and if they can sell and pitch their goods and hardware to people, and it makes people feel good even though it's a false sense of security. Like we have to do this to protect you from yourself. Before you know it, they're raised up on that ivory tower and it's no longer we're doing this to protect you from yourself, we're doing this to control you and manipulate you. If we don't do this for your own good, protect you from terrorism, give you national health care, because you're too stupid to pick your own health care and you sure can't be trusted to build any highways or control the flow of water within your state or county or dam it or have a power plant or anything without our overbearing guidance. So you need to surrender all these skills and freedoms to us. If you were to analyze them mentally, uh, many would be diagnosed as megalomaniacs and sociopaths. Everybody has varying degrees of desires, even sick people. How sick they want to be, how in charge they want to be. So some people will naturally be fine of just being in charge of a few thousand people. Others think in the size of nations. The best way to control a population is through resources. Uh, you don't gain much ground going door to door and kicking in doors and doing arm seizures. If you can control the ability for people to prosper and produce and to eat and to drink, then you control a population. By over-regulating industries with no scientific proof, you have crushed the ability for American manufacturing to be the lead in the world. And if we're not the lead in the world and you start closing plants, people aren't working, which means they're not buying food or buying Christmas presents. We should be the number one exporter of wood products. What do we do? We continually, year after year, set, up a, set a new record of catastrophic wildfires burning up in a matter of days. You cannot recover that. I can't wave a wand to make 200 years, 300 years of forest regrow for your children to enjoy. So it's that Hegelian dialectic. If you create the catastrophe, then you already have an answer to that catastrophe ahead of time. Then you create a catastrophe so you can come in and be the hero and save them. We cannot continue on this path without imploding, self-destructing. You will always have predator and prey. As we get weaker and weaker, we invite the predator. Now we can say it's North Korea or China or Venezuela. An adversarial country that seeks to have a larger stand in the world with a military or economically would be a fool not to pick on a country with the rich resources that we have and not make an attempt at a takeover. Do I want it to happen? Absolutely not, I'll be the first person to fight a red wave of Chinese invading us. I guarantee you I'll be up front with good friends. But if for an adversary not to take advantage of our weakening position strategically or tactically, they're not gonna pass that up. And I don't see how we're gonna get out of the current. We're not gonna get through one more generation.
Look at the ammunition sales that have been going on. What does the USDA Forest Service need to be stockpiling current combat 5.56 ammunition, M16 ammunition? Is there like some wave of Smokey the Bears that are rabid right now? Okay, somebody's preparing for something. They obviously aren't doing it to protect us. I think they're afraid of a, a, a cataclysmic backlash. I mean, you can only push a people so far before they said enough's enough. How do we mitigate the damage? Yeah. How do we do something good? We do some introspection, if you will. I'm not talking some Buddhist thing. I just mean that old phrase of looking in the mirror, saying, here's what I believe in, and here's what I'm willing to die for. Is it going to happen and we're just going to save the whole economy and country as we know it right now, or as we know it historically? No. It is infixable as we know it. It's going to have to implode, collapse, and we're going to have to... Uh, the survivors that want to prosper and be free again are going to have to rebuild again. <laughs>